Megan, Landon, Libby, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining me to talk to future Batten students about psychology for leadership. Um, my name is Ben Converse. Uh, I have been a faculty member at Batten for uh, 11 years. Um, this course is near and dear to my heart. Um, I, the, one of my first interactions with Batten was when I applied for the job and I came to UVA for the first time and I gave a, uh, a research talk in the psychology department about my dissertation research at the time and I gave a uh, teaching talk at the Batten School which was really uh, presenting a vision of what a psychology and leadership course might look like. So it's really been uh, 12 years that I've been trying to think about kind of how to take social and cognitive psychology and decision science and other aspects of behavioral science and uh, make it as useful as possible to future policy leaders. Um, I thought it would be much better, uh, admissions agreed with me, uh, to have students talk about the class uh, for the most part than to have me talk about the class. Uh, so I'm thrilled that you all are, are here to uh, give your comments and your perspective. Um, let me start with uh, Megan. I'll give you each brief introductions. Uh, and I'll give my overview comments, I guess, of the course uh, in a few minutes. But first, I'm going to uh, put each of you on the spot and just ask you, how would you describe uh, psych, psych for Leadership? What would you say uh, the course is about? So I'll start with Megan. Megan is uh, Megan Clancy is in the Accelerated MPP program. She got two associate's degrees from Reynolds Community College in Richmond and then transferred to UVA. At UVA, she's been involved with Ed Policy Works as a research assistant, and she interned at the Miller Center. She's also been a graduate teaching assistant for core classes in Batten's BA and MPP programs. Outside of UVA, she's worked at the Virginia General Assembly and she is currently a Presidential Management Fellows Program finalist. Uh, so Megan, how would you describe psychology for leadership? This feels more like a video or a, rather a game show than I thought it was going to. So I think that's good. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I'm getting called up to the front, uh, exactly. but thank you for having me and I'm excited to share, you know, you know, what my biggest takeaways of psych for leadership are is that it's really a crash course uh, in social psychology and really demonstrates that uh, before we can effectively exercise leadership in policy spaces or truly anywhere that we need to confront our own ignorance about human behaviors and, and motivations for such, uh, we often make you know, assumptions uh, based on anecdotal evidence from our own experience that can really lead us astray and, and in the policy space really uh, contribute to bad policy making, as, as I say it. Uh, so psych really helps us interrogate those common sense uh, assumptions, and I put common sense in, in quotations here, and uh, through the course you really learn to be more deliberate in your curiosity um, and ability to count for human conditions when you're um, thinking about uh, designing, implementing, and assessing public policy. And for me, it was uh, out of all of my Batten classes, the one that was most immediately applicable and kind of just uh, influenced the way that I was perceiving uh, everything in all my other courses, as well as my research experience. Awesome, thank you, Megan. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, one of the things we fought for over the last, fought for, we weren't fighting anybody, but pushed for over the last few years was uh, to move it into that first year because we wanted people to be able to start seeing uh, all of those connections and using them in the other classes that, that really fill in the content. But um, yeah, it's awesome that you're able to bring so much of it um, to the you know to the next classes and then to the work. Uh, next up in our game show is Libby Scully. Uh, Libby also got her BA at UVA and is now in the Accelerated MPP program. During her undergrad career, she was the social media manager for Cav Daily for two terms. Uh, and that shaped a lot of the projects she did for this class. And that's uh, one of the reasons that, that we asked her to come talk. Uh, this year, she's a research assistant in the National Security Policy Center at Batten, and she's heavily involved in Batten's FCG consulting. And next year, employment, uh, she will be working at the National Nuclear Security Administration. Uh, so Libby Scully, uh, what does Psych for Leadership mean to you? Hard to follow up after Meg, she covered such all of it. But uh, I would say there's uh, one really important thing about Psych for Leadership that Meg didn't mention. And it's that while in class, you learn all these concepts out of class, instead of just like reading a book and then writing all the answers down on a test, like it's more about applying those concepts, you know, to like big projects, which I'll get into later and in my involvement in CAV daily. Um, but otherwise than that, 
uh, yeah, based, this was my second social psychology class. And the reason why I really liked this one is because you got to learn all these concepts that were so directly applicable to your future career in policy. Thank you. And last up is Landon Weber. Landon is in the postgrad MPP program. Uh, so that more or less means that he got his BA a little while ago and had some work experience in the interim, not always, but uh, more or less. Uh, his BA was from Rhodes College in 2014. Uh, he worked at a number of places before entering the MPP program. Uh, and he's continuing to work uh, as he works his way through uh, the MPP program. Uh, before he started at Batten, he worked for state economic development agencies in Louisiana and Virginia. He's also been a research, in, uh, research intern at Brookings, and he is currently working at JLARC, the Joint Legislative Audit and Review Commission, while he finishes his MPP. Uh, Landon, what is Psych for Leadership about in your eyes? Yeah, I feel like coming third, it's hard to sort of carve out a distinct area to talk about, but I guess what I would say is kind of Building on what Meg said a little bit, like obviously the, the concepts of social psychology are sort of ruminating throughout the class and there's so many different things you're discussing, but what I found particularly helpful is kind of coming from the workplace. I was definitely looking for grad school to kind of be a way to, to refresh. There was a little, maybe a little bit of frustration there about why things don't work out the way you want them to, like in your first or second job. And for me, the, it's so easy to think about blaming the person or the personalities that are, that are at play. And I think it was like one of the fir first or second classes we talked about how important the situation is and all the different factors. And that's what you go on to discuss and then apply in your projects, thinking about those factors, how they may trigger people to respond to each other in certain ways. And just understanding that behavior is a lot more complex than just saying, well, that person is never going to budge or they don't agree with me. And I think for policymakers, it's really important to learn the econ and the stats, but that is critical to really getting anything done. So, so I have a new idea, which is I'm just going to have past students teach all my future classes for me, and it's going to work out really well. It's probably going to connect even better with the students, uh, and it will be easier and more fun for me. Uh, I think you guys absolutely nailed it. Um, you know, one of the things you all kind of mentioned failures in some way. That first lecture that I gave 12 years ago, that was kind of the structure of the lecture, facts, failures, and fixes, right? basic kind of stylized facts uh, from mostly social psychology, also cognitive psych and, and other behavioral sciences. And then what failures do those systematically lead to? What things, in what ways, even though we're really good at being human, like we have great relationships, you've made it this far, you've made it to graduate school, uh, you're doing great, but what do we know systematically goes wrong based on the things that usually work pretty well. So those are the failures, the biases, the heuristics, shortcuts that don't always serve us well. And then what do we know about how to, how to make those things better? So the, the sort of philosophical version of the course is trying to get people to think more scientifically about, or as leaders, not really about leadership. It's not to say there's a formula or uh, a theory that's gonna work in every single instance, but just to like approach the world as a scientist to not get so hung up on your assumptions uh, and then to try to figure out good ways to gather good information about the people and the goals uh, that you're trying to work with, uh, the, about the people you're trying to work with to accomplish these uh, big collective goals. And then the second big theme, if we can think more like a scientist, is to lead more like, a, like an architect or a situational architect. You all remember we talked about sometimes, which is the idea of like shaping the situation, setting people up. Uh, to be able to succeed. Uh, and it sounds like, you know, I think the, the reason I wanted you all to talk about it is because I think one of the things that can be challenging about the course, but also can be valuable is that people can dig into a lot of different parts of it and focus on different parts of it and sort of see it in different ways. So that that big broad picture comes through in different ways for different people. Uh, and I think that's what your experience is and, and, and your work uh, shows. And so uh, the next thing that I'd just like to, to talk about a little bit is what the, you know, there's a lot of different forms of work. I think the class is pretty challenging in a, in a number of different ways. Uh, but one of the things that's distinctive is that the projects have a, a quite a lot of flexibility, including one project that you can essentially just design the whole thing yourself. Uh, and you all are excellent students and excellent representatives in so many ways. Uh, we're thrilled to have you for all of those ways. Uh, but I really targeted each of you uh, for, for this uh, little panel because you did as well as anyone at kind of seizing that opportunity and making those projects yours, making them something uh, that was personal and important to you. 
so maybe we could start with Libby on this one, if, if you want to talk a little bit about some of the project work you did in the course. Yeah, for sure. So throughout the course, I based almost all of my projects around Cavalier Daily, which is the undergrad newspaper organization that I was involved in with for almost my entire undergraduate career. Um, and for my third year and fourth year in, at UVA, I was on JV, which is basically one of the leadership committees, almost like, of the student newspaper. And I saw a lot of problems while I was there, especially stuff re revolving like racial diversity and just accurate representation of the school. So throughout the class, I would just see from my own experiences what problems existed at UVA and try to apply the projects to them. So for the final project that Professor Converse was talking about, uh, the Distinction Project, uh, the entire semester, uh, one of my friends and I did a, an analysis of like a random month and uh, how many articles were done in the news and the life section on different like minority groups and their events. And then we kind of like analyzed it next to the diversity of the management board. Uh, and then it went, it went really well. We basically saw what we expected to see that there's very little representation on management board. So then there's very little representation within the newspaper. And we compared that to another semester where there was more representation and that followed suit. Uh, so we gave them different recommendations of how moving forwards, how they can increase representation within their board and within the newspaper. Um, and it was really well received within Cav Daily. They all they always wanted to change something, but they just never knew how to actually apply concepts and figure out actually how to do it. So we helped with that. And then in the past election for the executive board, uh, someone actually used uh, our findings from our project when in their uh, in their run for the uh, managing editor, I believe. Yeah, and I, you know, one of the things I remember being impressed with, aside from the work that you all did, was how receptive they were. Uh, not always uh, the kind of leadership situations we we find ourselves in, but uh, I thought that was very impressive, and you know, so cool to see that they're uh, continuing to try to use the work uh, that you and your group makes for. Uh, yeah. Working. Actually, to touch on that, uh, when I was on the management board, I remember there was a specific like diversity and equity initiative that I was involved in, and there was just no work done on it. Just mm -hmm. no one knew what to do. They're like, we see a problem, which is a good first step, but there wasn't enough like collaboration and discussion to figure out what could be done next. So yeah, it was really well received. Awesome. Landon, you want to go next on this one? Yeah, um, so my project kind of originated pretty early in the semester. Um, we read a book early on in the course um, about making things stick and sticky ideas, what it means to have something that's compelling for people that they remember, latch onto, maybe buy into. And um, Aaron Tour um, in the communications um, department at, at Batten came to speak to us and was talking about maybe some students using ideas or at least taking the class to brainstorm about ideas that would be sticky for future students. And I just remember a group of us kind of really getting excited about that idea. Um, Batten to me is unique as a public policy school because there's a mix of accelerated and post-grad students. There are students that are coming right out of their undergrad mixing with students that are maybe have been working or coming from different institutions. And some people get a little bit critical of that, but I actually see it as one of the biggest strengths of the program to be able to, to be with people from diverse backgrounds and perspectives and to be able to learn from each other, um, regardless of where you're coming from. And all of us were pretty passionate about that. And so what we realized is that we sort of haphazardly made it to Batten, um, often through lots of um, um, lucky conversations with Courtney and, and Jeff Chittister. And, and there was a lot that was communicated to us about the program, but not that someone could find in any maybe systematic way if they were just sort of having to on their own go and search um, and, and look up things about Batten. And there's probably things they wouldn't even know just unless they talked to Courtney and Jeff. And so what we thought about is what would it mean for the website um, for admissions to kind of rethink the way it did communications to try and create sort of profiles of information to target to particular students, maybe postgrads coming from the military, postgrads with other work experience, different types of accelerated students, and actually package bits of content about financial aid and other things that would be relevant to them. And there was a concept in the book about concreteness, that if you could really sort of 
understand something related to your own personal experience, it would be more compelling for you. And um, so we, we sort of ran with that. We did focus groups with students, um, asking them about potential ideas for content, um, asking them about their own experience with admissions and why they chose Batten and ultimately sort of built out this whole um, project. I'm not sure communications has really latched onto every aspect of it, but I really, I think that talking to them, it did produce some ideas and kind of generate some thoughts about maybe re thinking about a systematic way to reach out to students wherever they're coming from, because there's a lot of people that arrive at Batten for a lot of different reasons, but if they can really envision their path at Batten, it makes it easier to, to make that sell, I think. Meg, take it away. Yeah, uh, very similar to Landon's, um, my group's distinction, distinction project grew out of our Sticky Ideas project. Um, I'm a first generation college student. Uh, and one of the reasons that I chose Batten actually was uh, during first gen um, student week during my third year, they had a first gen uh, student pencil, panel where they had alumni and faculty uh, and current students just have a conversation about what it's like being first gen, uh, particularly in a graduate program. And that uh, really helped me feel welcomed into the community and like I, my experience would be, you know, validated and supported if I chose Batten. Um, and then once I got here, I realized like it wasn't all talk, but there were definitely certain aspects of the first gen experience that um, Batten faculty and administration just wasn't really understanding. So along with two of my peers, uh, much like Landon's group, we really wanted to make that experience concrete for them. Um, so we decided to make our distinction project a podcast that's using uh, the stickiness of uh, and compelling personal stories about the few first gen students that were um, in various parts of Batten. So we had people that were in the MPP program, uh, people in the BA program, and we had one potential student and we were able to uh, disseminate that internally uh, to really hone in on, you know, what are the hidden barriers that first gen students are facing at Batten and what can Batten do uh, to really address those needs. And in preparing for this, I actually went back and looked at our proposal and it was very ambitious. We wanted to have the Virginia Policy Review podcast like that had kind of been out of commission for a while, like kind of uh, open up the doorway with this, you know, first gen experience story and, and kind of build off of that. And then the pandemic happened. So we didn't quite get that uh, off the ground, but uh, I was thinking the other day, Virginia Policy Review actually did a first gen specific podcast with one of my group mates um, and some other Batten students and someone that I had connected with through my internship because uh, they do a lot of work out in the world. So I was like, actually, we did kind of like not in the way that we originally thought, but we kind of made it happen. And, and one of the other um, areas that we wanted to make an impact, much like Landon was, you know, perspective first gen students, when they look at the Batten page, are they gonna see themselves represented on there? And it, it uh, took, I think when we first counted, it took like 18 clicks to get to a page where you heard anything about first gen. Um, so it wasn't really front and center. And uh, I was pleased to see that it only took three clicks on the website today. So uh, while that might not be all because of our project, uh, I think the meetings that we were able to have with, with stakeholders like the media team uh, admissions team who has had uh, first gen specific panels uh, for per prospective students um, really to me has shown just the power of you know applying the concepts from psych immediately in my own world and it, it's um, seeing that success has really seeped into the way that I'm approaching my applied policy project um, as well as my uh, research with ed policy works and making sure that you know, not only are we developing these policies, but that we're really making them compelling and, and sticky for the people that we're trying to influence um, and convince to take action. So, yeah. Awesome, thank you. And I'm glad, you know, you mentioned at the end, just kind of how you're transitioning this work into your, your APP and, and future coursework. This isn't true of everyone, but I think the three of you are representative um, of the majority, at least of people in psychology for leadership who tend to if they even use the projects in such applied ways like you have, they, they tend to be relatively more local, often they're UVA or Batten things. Um, but it's the first year, right? Like we're, we're getting going and like these are small projects. It's not a project class where we're working all year on one project. Uh, and so I don't want to sort of 
uh, misrepresent the Batten, you know, the overall MPP curriculum as all being UVA focused or Batten focused, but these are convenient sort of laboratories or sandboxes uh, to start trying these things out. And then if you, you know, the more you learn about the curriculum as you all are going through it uh, and future students learn more about it, they realize it becomes increasingly outward focused, right? So uh, I don't want to give the impression that we're all working here, but I just think it's awesome in your first semester of the program you're already working outside the classroom, you're, you know, making real progress, uh, 15 clicks sooner, you know, uh, real diversity uh, on the board and just attention to it, um, being able to, to navigate the websites better, all these, you know, these things add up, right, and uh, little things can make a big difference is one of the great lessons of uh, social psychology, but also great policy and, and good leadership, so it's awesome to see that. Um, the other thing I'll just mention about the project work is for at least a couple of you have had the chance to talk to prospective employers uh, and fellowship people, vetters, whatever, uh, evaluators. Um, and you know, this project work I've seen, the, the more flexibility I've given Batten students over the years in this course, the more often I end up talking to prospective employers and the like about the work that you did, because you can write about it and you could say, we designed this and we decided on this and we pushed it all the way through. Uh, and then they call me and they say, hey, you know, we heard about this, like, what did you think? And I can say, yes, exactly as, as they said, like they designed it, they figured it out, uh, they made the connections and uh, it makes for really easy conversations uh, on my end in those spots. And so I think that's a, another way in which it, it starts inward focused, but it's outward focused uh, in so many different ways. Um, let me uh, close this up maybe uh, by asking each of you if you have uh, any advice uh, for, for future students or uh, or just any other uh, tidbits that, that you think they should know. I think Landon, you're the only one who hasn't gone first yet. So you get to go first. Yeah, maybe I can steal one of the original ideas. Yeah. Um, I So I, I say this about actually a lot of the um, leadership courses and um, when I'm talking, because sometimes there's people in our own cohort that take the classes at different periods of time. So what I would say is to approach it, it sounds cliche, but to approach it with an open mind and truly to, to um, really let go of the anxiety and focus on the excitement that comes with learning something new. Um, I think it, it, like I said, it sounds cliche, but I think there were a lot of people that there's aspects of the course, especially when you're given the chance to create a project on your own and you really can design the parameters that people, sometimes people step back and they get a little freaked out and say, they want some more guardrails and really it's the chance to, I guess one of the first chances at Batten to exercise leadership and really um, learn about in a hands-on way what that means. And I think just kind of taking that approach of chilling out a little, so soaking up those concepts and really keeping an open mind about learning, I think is critical to, to being successful in the class. Thank you. Meg, you wanna add anything? Yeah, uh, Landon, you, you got me back. You, you took my main one. Uh, but what I'll add on to that is I think, you know, this is a really um, unique opportunity to be really bold with the type of projects that you try to bring into the class. And uh, Professor Converse and his teaching team is really supportive of, you know, trying, you know, to give you the opportunity uh, to be creative with with where you want to reach out to um, and, and how you want to shape the projects. Um, but do so in a way where it's it's in a slightly safer space than trying these hats on out in the real world where you you like Landon said you have somewhat you know guard well, guardrails of being able to pr pick Professor Converse's brain um, about what might work and and trying things out and seeing if they fail like you can come kind of come back to the drawing board where that might not be the case in the real world all the time when when the stakes are slightly higher. Um, for me, it's really paid off. Like I said, I've used, you know, these concepts. Um, one of the classes that I was a teaching assistant for uh, kind of was reinforcing these concepts for the undergraduate uh, cohort. And um, it's really kind of just shaped what I see possible in public policy. I'm really interested in the intersection of, um, you know, behavioral science in public policy and how we, how we can use that uh, to make better, uh, smarter and more effective policy. So, uh, yeah, be bold. Thanks, Libby, you want to bring us home? Yeah, so pretty similar to other comments made, but if you want to get stuff out of these leadership classes, you have to have buy-in. You have to actually put forward effort in order to receive stuff from it. And if you don't do that effort, 
then you're you're not going to get anything. It's similar with all classes, but you really feel it in these psychology classes. Um, and this class is really good for buy-in because you can you have so much stuff around you. The reason why most people enter Baden is because you see problems in the world around you. So through this class, you're able to actually use concepts of teaching you like how to view these problems and possibly even how to change these problems. So look at the Charlottesville community, look at what really impacts you and use that to really get into the course. Awesome, thank you. I have nothing left to add. You all make me feel overconfident uh, as a teacher uh, and that's very much appreciated, especially uh, here on video. Uh, to our future Baton students, uh, we hope you'll join us. We hope this at least gives you uh, some more perspective to, to make a good decision. It's not a fit for everybody uh, and that's okay, uh, but hopefully this is good valid information that helps you imagine what it might be like uh, to a certain extent uh, and helps you figure out a, a good next step for, for your own careers and your own goals. To our uh, already distinguished but soon to be alumni, uh, thank you all for joining me. It's very much appreciated. Mm -hmm.